So today I'm going to show you how to change the oil in your car or truck. Now there are three basic steps that we're going to do. We are going to drain the old oil, we are going to change the filter for a new one, and then we're going to put in some new engine oil. So after you've watched this video, it should give you a good idea about the steps that you need to follow to change your own oil. And by doing this yourself, you'll get to choose exactly what quality of oil and filters that you want to use. And you'll also likely save some money. So, how do I know when my oil needs changing? Well, it should be written in your car's service manual or you can go around and ask a local mechanic or your service agents. Or in my case, I like to change my oil every 10,000 kilometers. It's about 6,000 miles or one year. So how do we know what oil and filter to use? Well, you can also go ahead and check your owner's manual or ask a service agent. So in today's case, I'll be using approximately 5.5 liters of Toyota branded 15W40 oil. So where do we get this oil and these filters? Well, if you go ahead and run down to your local auto parts store, there's going to be a wide selection of oils and filters to choose from. In my case, personally, I prefer to use the original oils and filters supplied by the service agent. So in this case, Toyota. But I guess whatever you guys choose, that's going to be good. So to get the job done, we are going to need new oil and a new filter. A spanner or a ratchet and socket to remove the sump plug. An oil catch pan to catch the old oil the oil filter socket or spanner to remove the old oil filter and of course some rags and if you don't like getting your hands dirty a pair of rubber gloves or if your aim isn't so good a small funnel to help when pouring the new oil in so i'm going to be changing the oil on this truck and as it stands it's high enough for me to get under without any problems however if you guys have got a low car you might also want to grab yourself a jack and a pair of jack stands or a couple of ramps First up, I'll take the car for a short drive or just let the engine idle for a while so that the oil can warm up and thin out. Now I'm not sure if this is strictly necessary, but this is the way I like to do it. Once that's done, I'll pull into the garage and remove the splash guards from under the engine. Now on many vehicles, especially trucks, you don't always have to remove these guards in order to drain the oil and to change the oil filter. But today, to make this job a little bit easier and so that you guys can see what's going on, I'm going to remove them. Next, I'll go ahead and crack loose the sump drain plug, slide in an oil catch pan and then remove the drain plug completely and let the oil drain. So top tip here, make sure your catch pan is large enough to hold the full amount of oil that you're going to be draining from your engine. And secondly, try not drop the drain plug into the bucket of oil. Next, I'll go ahead and remove the oil filter. To do this, I'm going to use an oil filter socket to loosen the filter. Now, if you don't have one of these, there are a couple of other ways that you can remove the filter and I'll tell you about those later on in the video. So once it's cracked loose, I'll unscrew and remove the filter. Now, sometimes depending on the filter's location, as the filter is unscrewed, it may drop a little bit of oil. So make sure your oil catch pan is below the filter or you've at least got a couple of rags on hand to wipe up any oil spills. Another good practice is to fill the new oil filter with fresh oil before installing it. And that is so that on startup, there's less chance of the engine running dry. Also keep in mind though that if your filter mounts horizontally or from the top of the engine, you may not quite be able to do this. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and wipe clean the area where the oil filter seats, the oil filter adapter if you will, and pop the filter on and tighten it up. Now another top tip here, the filter should thread on very easily. So Really guys, don't force it. If it's not going on easily, it's likely that it's been cross-threaded. So how tight do we have to make the filter? Well, it's written right on the side of the filter. Apply engine oil to the gasket face while ensuring that the filter gasket is fully seated into the groove. Tighten the filter another three quarter turn with a dedicated tool after the gasket makes contact with the installation face. After filling with engine oil, run the engine for three minutes or more to check for oil leaks. Another top tip here, dab a little bit of oil on your finger and rub it around the seal of the filter. This way the seal will tighten up nice and smooth without pulling the rubber out of place and reducing the chances of leaking. It also makes it just a little bit easier to loosen up the filter next time around. 
So while I've been doing this, the last bit of oil has been dripping out of the pan. And now we need to screw the plug back in and fill it with oil. So another quick tip here, if you're working outside in the wind, when the last bit of oil is coming out and starts trickling or dripping out and a gust of wind comes along, it can quite easily cause the oil to splash around and make quite a large mess. So maybe it's a good idea to have a couple of rags around the area. Now before I screw the plug back in, I'll wipe clean the area and also check that the old ceiling washer or the crush washer has been removed. So in my case, if you look closely, you can see that the old blue washer is still stuck onto the bottom of the oil pan. And it is very important, we need to remove this before installing the new washer and plug. We don't want to end up with having two washers stacked together. And guys, these ceiling washers or these crush washers are fairly cheap items. So just pick one up and rather replace it, rather than risking an old one and then your oil pan leaks. Now that the old washer is removed, I'll put the new washer onto the sun plug and then screw it in. Also, make sure it's torqued to the correct spec for your vehicle. And in my case, about 35 newton meters or 25 foot pounds should work just fine. Now you might find this really hard to believe, but the next step is very important. Don't forget to fill your engine with oil. So once that's done, wait a couple of minutes for the oil to run down, check the dipstick to see if it's got enough oil in it, pop the filler cap back on, and well done, that's it. Your oil change is complete. So all that's left is to start the car, check that the oil light goes out, let it idle for a few minutes, turn it off and then go check for any leaks. Now, if you didn't clean the area properly, it might be a little bit tricky to clear or to check for leaks. So it's always good practice to take a bit of brake clean, spray the entire area down, wipe it off, make sure that it is nice and dry so that it is really easy to see for any leaks. Also, uh, it, it's another top tip here, there's a whole lot of tips in this video, but on the bottom of your oil filter, take a nice uh, paint or maybe a white paint marker, write on there the date or the mileage when the oil was put in so that the next person knows when last the oil filter has been changed. It's also a good idea to let the car stand for a couple of minutes and then again do an oil level check, pull out the dipstick, check that you have in fact still got enough oil in the vehicle. So during the video, I told you I was gonna give you some other options if you don't have one of the oil filter sockets that fit your oil filter. Well, you get other things, and I've got some of them here. Um, they, they're known as a strap wrench, so your oil filter goes in the little gap here, you pull it tight, and then you rotate it, and it's supposed to turn loose the filter. Another version of that is it uses a chain, but the same principle, basically. Filter goes in the gap there. Guys, don't waste your money on these things. They're absolute rubbish. Don't waste your money or time on them. Rather get yourself a socket that fits the oil filter for your for the vehicles that you've got. Or better yet, if you want something universal, get yourself a channel lock or a slip joint pliers uh, that are meant to take loose oil filters. They've got long jaws with little grippy bits on the end. Those work actually pretty well. Or you also get another version. It looks like a vice grip with long jaws and little grippy bits. That also works well. Don't waste your money there. So if you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider subscribing. It really does help out. Also, leave us a comment. I love to hear from you guys. Let us know about the tips and tricks that you guys have come across when it comes to changing your oil and oil filter. Also, one last thing to keep in mind, and it's very important, the steps that you saw in today's video are the steps that I followed to change the oil and filter in my specific vehicle. Now, if you've got a different vehicle, those steps may be different, so you must first check if there's specific steps or specific procedures that you need to follow in order to successfully change the oil and oil filter in your car. Guys, thanks very much for watching. My name is Grant Burton. This is the Burton Builds Garage, and you guys will see me in the next video. Cheers.